three to six grams of this stuff is where the sweet spot is. We're talking about a unique combination that ends up creating carnosine. So carnosine is one of these dirt cheap supplements that quite frankly, I think doesn't get the attention because it's so cheap and so simple that it would take away from more expensive elaborate things. And that's just the way that it is. So we'll go through crazy newly discovered benefits ranging from, of course, the obvious exercise performance, muscle building side, but now we're seeing even fat loss, insulin resistance, advanced glycation in product benefit, and now huge neuroprotective and brain benefit, all from something that is super duper cheap. And there, I told you exactly what it is and you know hard and much to take already. If you don't mind, stick around through the video though so you can learn how to use it in all these different applications. And if you can, drop a comment down below. It helps the algorithm hit that subscribe button. So the cool thing is, is that carnosine is what is called an oxidative buffer. Okay, so we know that from the exercise side because we've seen it used in pre-workouts to kind of help you get through that burn that you get. It helps push the burn a little bit further along. But what we didn't realize is that that burn is happening at small scales throughout the day in all tissues, including our brain, and including the muscle tissue throughout the course of the day that could be impacting insulin resistance. So huge metabolic benefits that we're seeing from this stuff. And again, if we're talking dirt, dirt, cheap stuff. Not the same as just taking beta alanine because carnosine is made up of beta alanine and histidine. So when you take beta alanine, you're essentially making it so that you create carnosine. Why not just go straight to the source? You can get carnosine from meat. The problem is you'd have to eat a ton of it and it doesn't seem to translate directly into high amounts of tissue carnosine, what we're really looking for, unless you were eating ridiculous amounts and that's just not practical. So let's dive into all the research. And I put a link down below for 30% off your entire grocery order from Thrive Market. But the main reason that I like them is because of the sourcing that they have for their ingredients, right? All their food, all the items on their shelves, so to speak, have good quality ingredients that they have vetted. So the entire idea behind Thrive is to make good, healthier food accessible to everybody, which is amazing. And that's why their ingredients are so top notch on the foods that they choose to put on their shelves. Also, groceries are expensive right now, so you might as well take advantage of a 30% off discount link and get them delivered to your doorstep so you don't have to deal with expensive gas prices too. So that link is down below for 30% off and a free gift with your first order. Let's talk first on the muscle side because that's where most of the research is known and who doesn't like to build a little bit more muscle. So there's a study that was published in Clinical Nutrition, ESPEN. I liked this study because it was a large meta-analysis. So it was looking at the yo-yo test. Okay, the yo-yo test is a test of endurance, sort of aerobic capacity actually, and more anaerobic performance. So it's kind of like mixing the yo-yo kind of qualities there. They were looking at 10 different groups as a meta-analysis, so large amounts of data. And at first they looked at this as, okay, there's no significant difference with the use of beta alanine in this case and performance. But when they broke down the studies into studies that were six weeks or longer, then all of a sudden they started seeing more benefit, right? They saw this is a legit ergogenic aid. So even though people will say, yeah, there's benefits when you take it acutely, it seems as though it may even build up in your system and longer term, you have more of an ergogenic or just performance benefit. But then there's a more bodybuilder specific study that was published in the Turkish Journal of Sports and Exercise. And this one was interesting because it looked at bodybuilders. In this case, they gave them six grams per day and they did this for five days per week for four weeks. And what they found is that their time to exhaustion, their overall fatigue was significantly improved. So their perception of fatigue, their ability to push through was way, way, way better than compared to placebo. They also saw a big increase in peak power. So, okay, there's the evidence, but what's going on? So number one is there's the pH buffering piece. When we are using our glycolytic energy, when we're using uh, carbohydrates for fuel, when we're using an anaerobic energy, what happens is you have an increase in hydrogen ions and those hydrogen ions end up building up and that ends up creating an acidic environment. Well, carnosine actually buffers this. So carnosine buffers the acidic environment it makes it so you can push a little bit longer before acidity takes you down. But one of the things that people don't talk about with carnosine, because it's a little more complicated, is that carnosine increases calcium sensitivity. What this means is that you're increasing the sensitivity of the contractile proteins to calcium in the muscle. This is what triggers the contraction. So when there is more sensitivity to calcium, the muscle can contract harder and it can contract and create more force 
in a cleaner way coming from your brain. So imagine being able to like engage and turn on the muscles you want to turn on and contract them stronger. You're literally getting better force production for each and every nerve impulse. So when the brain is sending a nerve impulse, you're getting better contractile force. Definitely what we want when it comes to building muscle, when it comes to weight training, or just performance in general. This is the part that isn't talked about that I think is so unbelievably fascinating. Okay, so we know that it works well there, but let's talk a little bit more about the brain. This is where it gets really fascinating for me. The brain is obviously a tissue too, and carnosine is going to have an impact there. What's funny is that there are previous studies that looked at carnosine having neuroprotective effects on people that were like having more cognitive decline issues, but there hadn't been a study up until recently that looked at younger, healthy people. This is where it got fascinating. So this is a 231 participant study published in Neurotherapeutics, okay, and they gave them carnosine or placebo. And what they found is that even in the youngest group, carnosine improved the speed and efficiency of their brain significantly. What this tells us is that this has a benefit for high level cognitive. So even when the brain is already healthy and moving fast, it's taking it a step further. It's just like how it works in athletes at a muscle level. So what's potentially happening here? Well, for this, we look at a study that was published in Applied and Environmental Microbiology, and it seems to come down to advanced glycation end products. Now, advanced glycation end products this is when sugars in the bloodstream, not just necessarily sugars you eat, but sugars in the bloodstream react with proteins, they'll react with uh, lipids, they'll react with nucleic acid. So basically they create these things that are called AGEs, maybe you've heard them before, and they are major epicenters for oxidative stress and damage and DNA damage within our body. It's one of the reasons why our skin looks so weathered when we have high oxidative stress. Those are usually as a result of AGEs forming. Now, AGEs obviously form in the brain too, so this can be very bad, but carnosine buffers this from happening. Carnosine actually binds to the reactive carnosyl species, okay, like methylglyoxal. These are the things that actually start glycation in the first place. What does this mean in human terms? It means carnosine stops advanced glycation in products from forming before they ever actually form. It stops them from forming. Okay, it stops the methylglyoxal from actually initiating AGEs. Hugely beneficial across the entire body, but specifically in the brain. So when you reduce these AGEs in the brain, the brain can simply function clearer. The other part that is ridiculously fascinating, and this is hard to even talk about on YouTube because they just don't like when you talk about like heavy metal detoxification, but there is an effect on carnosine sequestering zinc, manganese, and other metals, namely copper, which builds up in the brain. Okay, this builds up in the brain as we age and is heavily correlated with neurodegenerative conditions. So by sequestering some of these and actually binding to them, in a way it's neutralizing some of these heavy metals to be less reactive in the brain. So this is a huge neuroprotective piece, but it also improves cognitive function beyond like what people could really think about. Because we're not studying this stuff heavily when in reality, we have a buildup of these heavy metals and they tend to build up in our brain oftentimes. There's this thing that's called Fenton chemistry and it's where these hydroxyl radicals actually increase and they bind and they damage DNA, they cause all kinds of issues in the brain that can lead to neurodegenerative conditions and at the very least lead to cognitive impairment even at a healthy level, right? Even at a normal high cognitive level. So bottom line is having adequate levels of carnosine where we should be, because it gets depleted easily, could be hugely beneficial for the brain. Now we move over to the metabolic side, the fat loss and insulin resistance side, where it gets even more interesting. There was a wicked cool study published in Advances in Nutrition. It was 20 studies, 20 different studies, mixed of human and rodents. So there's heavy mechanistic and good observational data. Long story short, carnosine supplementation led to a decrease in HbA1c, decrease in fasting insulin, and decrease in insulin resistance, not to mention increase in insulin sensitivity. Why could this be happening? The biggest reason probably comes back to the advanced glycation end product piece. Advanced glycation end products are a major driver of insulin resistance. And once insulin resistance is high and glucose goes higher, it steamrolls and it gets even worse because then you have more sugar in the bloodstream, more sugar reacting with proteins and lipids, creating more AGEs. So when you stop the AGEs, you actually can potentially stop some of the progression 
of insulin resistance because you're not just reducing the glucose potentially, which you are, but you're potentially making it so that the methylglyoxal cannot bind and start glycation in the first place. Maybe reducing some of the inflammatory responses that can cause insulin resistance in the first place. Interesting, what can we find just with simple meat, right? But again, we'd have to eat a lot of it. So taking carnosine might be hugely beneficial here. Now, the last piece has more to do with the mitochondria, and it's a little bit newer, a little bit more fringe, but there's a study published in Nutrients that found that carnosine increased what's called PGC1A. This increases mitochondrial biogenesis, so it allows us to form new mitochondria. Mitochondria, take in glucose, turn into energy, take in fat, turn into energy, more mitochondria, better functioning mitochondria equals better fat utilization, better glucose utilization, less insulin resistance, more overall fat loss, right? Now, this one's a little bit newer, needs some more evidence behind it, but it's very, very fascinating. Now, when we take all this metabolic stuff and the AGE piece, and then, of course, the contractile muscle tissue piece with the calcium sensitivity, think about how that applies to the cardiovascular system. We're starting to see evidence with carnosine being beneficial for the heart and the actual contractile tissue within the heart, not to mention the stopping of these free radicals and advanced glycation end products that could be forming near the heart. Now, more research needs to be done there. That is very fascinating. But we're also starting to see the early evidence in the immune system modulation as well. So bottom line is, if you can commit to just trying a few grams per day of this stuff, you might start noticing something. Again, you know, take everything with a grain of salt or a grain of carnosine, but it's a simple amino that it's pretty darn easy to get and very inexpensive. So as always, keep it locked in my channel. See you.